Hey Wolfpack and welcome back. I hope you all are doing well, and I hope you enjoyed yesterday's video. Today, we're doing a story on the Appalachian Trail. With that said, whether you're sitting around a campfire, on the night shift, or even laying in bed, let my voice soothe your nightmares. My friend Jack and I decided to hike the Appalachian Trail. We spent a year preparing ourselves for a five to six month journey. Our starting point was Mount Cotadin, Maine, and we left in mid-June. The journey started without any trouble. We encountered hiker groups and wild animals, which never caused us any issues, except for the occasional bear that decided to stroll through our camp at 3 a.m. The first sign of suspicious activity appeared around the three month mark. They were nothing that were too noticeable, maybe a partially scratched out trail marker or a slightly blocked path. However, the markings began to become more and more obvious over the following weeks. Hey Jack, why do you think these marks keep popping up? I was about to ask the same thing. They started in where? Pennsylvania? Somewhere around there. I just hope they stop. Eventually, an entire trail is going to be covered up. Same. Hey Richard, look at that. It's another path with the tree over there. Does anyone maintain these paths? We climbed over the tree and continued on. At this point, we could count on a downed tree or some other obstruction every day. This grew tiresome, but we were not going to give up. We were so far into the trip that we were not going to give up because of a few obstacles. After stopping to resupply at a town, we continued. We set up camp and prepared for the next day of hiking. Jack reviewed the map, and I took inventory. I made sure everything was secure, so that animals would not get our food, and we went to bed. I fell asleep right away, but was woken up around midnight by a disturbance outside my tent. I slowly and quietly stepped out of my tent. There was a bright, full moon that night, so I could clearly see someone walking away from our campsite back onto the trail and around a corner. I carefully slipped on my boots and followed. However, once I got around the corner, there was no one there. The trail was straight for a few hundred feet, so there was no way someone could go around the next turn so quickly and quietly. I shrugged my shoulders and went back to bed, but never fell asleep again. Something was off. I felt weird about the whole situation. Jack, did you notice anything odd last night? No. Why, did you? No, I just didn't sleep well. Maybe it was a dream. Well, let's get going. We have a long stretch to hike today. We set off again. Nothing that suspicious happened for a few days. The third day, after the incident, I had another night full of tossing and turning. It was a cloudy night, and there was some light rain. I thought I heard something or someone walking close to our tents. I assumed it was Jack going to relieve himself, or another sprinkle of rain. I fell asleep a little bit after the noises stopped. That morning, I got up just past dawn and saw a note nailed to a tree mere feet from our tents. Hey Jack, you need to see this. I waited a few minutes for Jack to emerge from his tent. What do I need to see? I held out the note I ripped off the tree. He grabbed it, paused, cleared his throat, and read it aloud. Dear the daring hikers, we have tried to deter you from countering your journey. You are persistent. We give you that. But your trip ends here. We hoped it would not come to this. But you have forced our hand. The obstacles we have placed do not seem to phase you. But trust us, the next one will. However, if you wish to avoid your fate, then turn back. You just might make it out before we find you. Good luck. We sat in silence for several minutes until I spoke up. Well, what do you think? Jack was still silent. He was reading over the note again. When he finished, he shook his head and said, Probably someone just trying to scare some tourists. I wouldn't take it seriously. Let's pack up and head out. Despite what Jack said, I couldn't simply ignore the note. 
I did see that person the other night, and probably heard the person who placed the note as well. The whole situation just felt off. Luckily, a ranger station was about where we would end today's stint. I kept the note and planned to show whoever was there. Hopefully, they would have some answers. We reached the ranger station just before dusk. Jack set up camp while I went to speak with the ranger. I wasted no time telling him about the threatening message we found a few days prior. He looked concerned, but quickly reassured me. I have seen several notes like this before. They are mostly done by practical jokers or some bored teen. That said, I advise you to stay aware, on the off chance that this is real. Feel free to sleep in my hut tonight if you want. I'll patrol the area to look for any suspicious activity. I told Jack what the ranger told me, but he still was not phased by the note. I do not see a reason why this should be taken so seriously. It is most definitely some prank. I'll be sleeping in my tent. If you want to take the ranger's offer, I won't stop you. Okay, good luck. I hope I don't have to say I told you so. Good night. Good night, Richard. I grabbed some assorted items and set up inside the hut. I brought my machete, hunting rifle, and pocket knife with me. Jack thought I was paranoid. But something has been nagging at me ever since that moonlit night when I saw that person. I turned off my light and quickly fell asleep. I had a restful night. The first one in weeks, actually. I woke up, energized and ready to move on. I gathered my stuff together and headed over to Jack's tent. Something was off as I approached it. The tent flap was ripped, and half of it was lying on the ground. The tent was a little bent, showing signs of a struggle. I ducked inside and looked around the walls. Everything seemed fine. I turned to leave, but I felt resistance on my boot. I looked down. There was a red sticky substance on the floor. It had clear brush strokes and spelled out, we warned you. I hoped it was paint, but the smell proved otherwise. I waited for the ranger to come back, and when he did, I reported the situation to him. He went from a casual professional tone to one of more seriousness and nervousness. Did you see anything last night? No, I didn't. But one thing is for sure, that this is no longer some prank. I'll need to call this in. By all means, if you need help searching, just let me know. Stay in the hut for now. The last thing we need is two hikers missing, or even worse, a possible double murder. I followed his advice and stayed in the hut after moving the rest of my stuff inside. This drove me crazy. I was stuck inside and unable to help my friend. I tried to sleep the day away, which worked eventually. I woke up at some point in the middle of the night and got up to get some fresh air. I stepped out and noticed something in the distance. There was an orange glow in the woods below the hill that the hut was on. It looked to be some kind of fire, but all the way out here? There must be some rules against that kind of thing I thought. Neglecting the advice I was told, I left to investigate. I brought my knife, machete, binoculars, and hunting rifle just in case. I never expected to actually use them on the trip, at least not like this. I forgot to bring my flashlight though, but the moon's light was all I needed. The woods were relatively clear, which aided me in making them easier to navigate. There were lots of pine needles and not many leaves, which helped keep my footsteps muffled. I walked for about 10 minutes before I saw a clearing lit up by the orange glow of fire. I slowed my pace and made sure to stay in the shadows of trees and large boulders. There were about 15 to 20 people who surrounded it. They were all in dark clothing and wore hoods that covered their faces. Four people came out of the woods and were pushing two people in front of them. They both had their hands tied behind their back and were gagged. I grabbed my binoculars to see who they were. The person in front of the ranger and the person who followed him was Jack. They both had gashes on their forehead, probably from some kind of resistance against the hooded figures. The one who led the precision stopped and turned to face his kidnapped victims. The people who surrounded the perimeter of the clearing started chanting in a language I could not recognize. The leader pulled a curved knife out from his robe, held it above his head, and unsheathed it. 
there were symbols engraved on the blade and was stained red. He lowered the knife and held it inches from the ranger's throat. The chanting became faster and louder. The leader pressed the blade against his throat and slowly cut in. The gag prevented speech, but a scream of pain still projected from him. The man holding him let him go and he collapsed. Blood was spilling out and coated the ground. The body was then thrown into the fire after a minute of intense chanting. The chanting briefly stopped and then resumed at a slower pace as Jack was pushed forward. I put down my binoculars and grabbed my hunting rifle. I knew the task that lay before me. In order to save Jack, I would need to kill the leader. If I only injured him, these heinous acts would continue for sure. I felt no sympathy for the person anyway considering the action I just witnessed. My plan was to shoot the one holding the knife, rush in with my machete, and cut Jack free. The disarray will hopefully allow us to escape. I laid down, put the barrel on a rock, and aimed for the leader's head. This shot would determine the fate of Jack, but I was remarkably calm. As the knife was put inches in front of his neck, I pulled the trigger. Nothing happened, just a click. I froze, and then frantically tried to unjam the gun. The chanting grew faster. I fumbled with the weapon, desperately trying to fix it. The chanting grew louder. I tried every method of repair I knew, but to no avail. I heard a muffled scream and the chanting stopped. I felt my heart being crushed as I looked up and saw Jack falling to the ground. His blood poured out like a hose. The ground became even more bloody than before. I crumpled to the ground and felt the world spinning around me. Luckily, I didn't pass out, but I came close. I managed to remember the direction I came and started to make my way back. I barely made it back to the hut before my legs completely failed. I was in pure shock at that point. After some time, I found a radio and called for help. The authorities came early the next morning where I explained what I saw and showed them the site of the murder. Then I went back to the hut and waited. I was escorted out of the woods after about an hour and checked into a hotel for a few weeks while an investigation unfolded. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough evidence to lead to a suspect and the case went cold. I was forced to accept the harsh reality that my friend's murderer would go unpunished. Once I got home, I tried to put the whole scenario behind me, but my dreams would not give me that luxury. Whenever I sleep, I am forced to relive Jack's death. Only now, I am mere feet away. I see every aspect in extreme detail. The knife, the blood, and Jack's scream of pain. I wake up when Jack hits the ground and don't fall back asleep again. I feel the insomnia setting in and wonder how bad it will get. All I can do at this point is hope it ends. Thanks for listening, Wolfpack. If you want to submit your own story, the links for my email and subreddit will be down below. I've also created a Discord, so if you want to join that, the link will be in the description down below as well. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And with that said, have beautiful nightmares, and I will see you next time.